What's up everybody? So in today's video, I'm gonna show you the process that I took to make some nice big built-in cabinets for a buddy of mine. Now his wife is working from home permanently now and instead of having a bunch of bookcases all over the place, they wanted to set up a home office with a nice big set of built-in cabinets. Now some of this footage is a couple years old, I just have never gotten around to editing it. And unfortunately I've lost some footage somewhere along the way, but none of it was really big deal. It was just painting for the most part. Take it with a grain of salt, it's still with an old camera, everything like that. So it's not my best stuff, but it'll at least give you an idea. I'm not really going to give too many measurements either because everybody's room is different, but I'm going to show you the process and some of the designs that I went through in order to make these cabinets. Check them out. Now the first thing you're obviously going to need is a good set of detail plans. I had these sketched up on some paper and I had made many revisions along the way, but once I had my shapes and sizes, it was time to start throwing some sawdust. The entire cabinet boxes themselves are going to be made out of 3 quarter inch sanded birch plywood. Now for my design, I'm going to have two outer cabinets and I'm going to have a center cabinet. The center cabinet is going to be about two inches deeper than the outer cabinets. And then I'm also going to have some upper bookshelves above the outside cabinets. And those are going to be about four inches uh, shallower than the lower cabinets themselves, but the exact same width. Now one thing I am doing on these cabinets is I'm adding a quarter inch plywood backer panel. So I'm taking my router and I'm routing in a quarter inch deep rabbit in all of my side panels of the cabinets as well as the upper shelves. And the reason I'm doing that is the plywood is going to be painted wall color and this will just alleviate any potential gaps you might have if you're just butting the cabinet up against the wall because walls are never really straight. So this just fixes that problem. Now the entire assembly for these cabinets is going to be pocket hole screws and wood glue just to keep it nice and simple but also very strong. I'm only going to be showing one cabinet and one upper shelf because the other ones are identical and I don't need to show that a million times over. Now to make sure the floor of my cabinet is perfectly level I've flushed up both of my cabinet sides with each other and then I'm tracing my mark across both of them at the same time. This is just to make sure that everything is perfectly square when I go to mount this guy up. Now when you're going to cut out the lower shelf or any of your upper shelves or stretchers, make sure that everything you do is fitting inside of that quarter inch rabbit there at the back because otherwise you're not going to have any room to mount your backer panel. Now if you're wondering why I'm using brad nails and pocket hole screws, the brad nails are not structural. They're inch and a half long brads and it's just a couple and those are meant to kind of hold the panel in place and stop it from walking around on me while I'm tightening up the pocket screws. Now we can start making our stretchers. These first two I've got are just made out of scrap plywood pieces and the thick one is going to go on the top front side of the cabinet and that will give me a place to mount my face frame as well as drill through and mount my top later on. And the narrow one is going to go on the back side below the bottom shelf and that's just going to help prevent it from sagging over time. All right, now this guy right here is the last stretcher we're gonna cut out. Now this is cut out of a piece of one by four poplar and not plywood. The reason being is we need this guy to be good and strong because this is actually what we're gonna screw through to later on and fasten the cabinets to the wall. But because it is gonna be visible inside of the cabinet, I wanted to just soften the lower leading edge of it with the round over bit in the router just to dress it up a little bit so it's not as harsh. Now because we're fastening to the wall with this guy, it is going to be on the upper back side of the cabinet. Now when you go to fasten this guy, remember to make sure you're attaching it inside of your quarter inch rabbit in the back. Now we can move back to the front side of the cabinet and start our work on the face frame. Now the face frame is going to be made out of 1x2 poplar and I'm going to be making my face frame just perfectly flush all the way around with my center cabinet. My outside cabinets however, I'm going to be making my face frame overhang each side a quarter inch. Now the reason being is because on one side they're going to be butted up against the wall and the other side is going to be butted up against my center cabinet and this just gives me a little bit of adjustability and wiggle room to make sure that everything can fit squarely and not be ramrod it up against a uneven corner of the wall or something like that. Assembly on the face frame is super simple. Once you've got all your styles and rails cut out, 
Go ahead and take all of your horizontal rail pieces and drill two pocket holes in each end and the entire thing is going to be held together with pocket holes and screws. I am however on my vertical style pieces making sure to make the exact same measurement and mark on each side where I want my lower face frame piece to be so it lines up perfectly flush with my shelf. With the face frame done, we can attach it to the body. Now we are going to permanently attach this guy with some glue and then set the frame down one corner at a time just to make sure you don't smear the glue or at least as little as possible. Then to send it home, we're going to lock it in place with some inch and a half brad nails in the nailer and kind of pushing and pulling the plywood sides with your thumb just to get everything sitting absolutely perfect before you lock her down. Now because I had absolutely no idea what she was going to be putting in here for work, I made sure to make the center shelf completely adjustable with a bunch of shelf pins. This way she can move it up and down depending on if it's books, binders, paperwork, files, whatever she's got going in here, it'll fit. Now we can start working on our upper bookshelves. Now because these guys are so tall but narrow, they're going to want to be kind of wobbly and flimsy and rack a lot. So in order to stop that from happening, I'm going to hard mount my center shelf in these. I'm going to have a floating shelf above and below, but the middle is going to be hard mounted. Now I wanted it also to be in the center of my opening for the shelves. So because I'm going to be using a 1x4 as my top rail on the face frame, I measured down 3.5 inches and then I found the center of my opening from there and that's where I'm going to put my middle shelf. The rest of the face frames however are just going to be made with the same poplar 1x2 as everything else. Then I just got to remember to transfer that same mark over to my side styles for my face frame so I know where my center rail is going to end up for the shelf later on. Now these upper cabinets are going to be assembled the same, but slightly different. It's still going to be glue and screws that are holding them together, however it's not going to be pocket hole screws because those are going to be visible on this guy. So to avoid that, we're actually going to face screw directly through the side panels into the upper panel. And we're going to countersink the holes and then just add some inch and a half deck screws. Now the reason we can get away with this is because later on these are actually going to be hidden by some inch and a half crown molding trim that we're going to add. And then the side shelf, we can just fill those in and once it's painted, you're never going to know they're there anyway. Now when it comes to attaching the face frame of the upper cabinets, the one side that's going to be against the wall, I'm going to do the same as the base cabinets and leave a quarter inch overhang and the side that's going to be just free in the air, openly visible, is going to be flush with the sides of my panels. So make sure when you're assembling your face frame, you account for that quarter inch overhang on one side. I'm just using my speed square set at a quarter inch to set the depth of it and that's the same way I did it on my lower cabinets as well. Now these are the holes that we'll fill in later. Once they're sanded and filled and painted, they'll be perfect. You'll never know they were there. 
Just like the lower cabinets, I'm going to drill some shelf pin holes as well. And I'm just going to use a spacer that'll give me a nice amount of adjustability, but keeping the shelf basically in the center opening that I had available. Now, when it comes to my shelves, they're made out of three quarter inch birch ply, but because there's going to be a ton of weight on these guys and I want to prevent sag over time, I attached some one by two poplar boards to the front and back side of my base cabinet shelves and just to the front side of my upper cabinet shelves. Now I had to batch out a bunch of doors, but if you guys want to check that out, I've got a dedicated video explaining just how I do exactly that. Go ahead and check that out. Now we got to go around and fill all the nail holes, screw holes, as well as any small little tiny gaps you may have anywhere on this. And I'm going to use drywall spackle for that because it sands super easy and dries quickly. Now we can start making things pretty by adding trim. So on the upper bookshelf cabinets, I'm going to start my trim off on the very top by adding a piece of 1x3 poplar. I'm making sure I have an inch and a quarter overhang all the way around and that's just solely because of the thickness of the crown molding I've got that's going to go underneath of it. It'll give me a decent overhang once I route a profile on the bottom of this poplar with a chamfer bit. When it comes to my upper trim, I'm going to pre-assemble that and that's going to do a couple things for me. One, it's going to give me a nice tight fitting miter joint right here. And I'm going to do that with some wood glue and some two inch brad nails. Just make sure when you fire in your brad nails, you're shooting one above and one below so they don't risk hitting each other and blowing out somewhere. The second thing it's going to do is when I route my chamfer right here on the front lower side, it's going to make sure that that is nice and uniform all the way around because the pieces are joined together when I do it. With our upper trim set aside, we can start working on the lower crown molding and this is literally just going to be the exact same process as the upper stuff was. And then to install both pieces, it's just going to be wood glue and inch and a quarter brad nails in the nail gun. With the assembly finished now we can sand everything down with some 120 grit sandpaper, blow it all apart for paint. And that's where I lost some footage. But it's just paint so I think we can all figure that part out. Once you have at least one coat of paint on however, you're going to notice that there might be some gaps like that where the paint has shrunk down in between the seams. And it's a super easy fix. What we're going to do is take some white acrylic latex caulk and we're going to apply a very thin bead to all of those areas. And that's going to fill everything in once you smooth it out with your finger, let it dry for a couple hours, and then you can put another coat of paint on. Now I didn't have this problem with my face frames or anything like that because I filled them in with the drywall spackle beforehand and sanded them smooth so it's a nice finish. I also applied some caulking to all of my trim and molding pieces along the top. Now because I used a water-based paint, it raised the grain slightly of the wood and instead of sanding between coats, a good alternative is wait a couple days after your last coat and then just wipe the whole thing down with the shop rag. It takes off all the dust nibs and smooths it out perfectly. With the paint on the cabinets drying, we can start working on our countertops. This is a giant slab of Acacia hardwood butcher block countertops that you can buy from any of the big box stores. I'm literally cutting it to the same width as my face frames for all of my cabinets but I'm cutting it an inch deeper than the cabinets themselves. And that's just so that when I have my doors installed, which are three quarters of an inch, the cabinet tops will overhang them by a quarter inch. Then on all the cut ends, because they're now open and exposed, I'm gonna use some butcher block mineral oil, put a couple coats, just wipe them on with the shop towel and they'll be good to go. Then the final thing to do is attach all of our quarter inch plywood backer panels. And like I said, these are painted wall color. And once they're installed, it'll give me a nice uniform finish in the cabinet. Then it's final assembly time. I removed the baseboard along the wall where the cabinets are going to be, found all of my studs, slid the cabinets in place, attached them to the wall through my back poplar stretchers using some two and three quarter inch screws, attached the tops, attached the upper bookshelves in the exact same manner, put the doors on, step back and enjoy.
Well, what'd you think? I think the cabinets turned out awesome. They really like them and that's what really matters. So that was awesome. But ultimately you guys, you can totally build these. It just takes a few fairly basic tools and some nice little trim and attention to detail and you can take just what's ultimately a basic plywood box, gussy it up into something that just turns out fantastic. So I hope you guys liked the video. I hope you may have picked something up. Maybe you're gonna tackle something like that and build some for yourself. If you do, hit me up, let me see them. I want to email, Instagram, I don't care which way you do it. So thanks very much for watching you guys. I really honestly do appreciate it and I will see you guys in the next one. Have a good one.